Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, in the resplendent, grant us, O Lord, the resplendent colors of your compassion and mercy, to paint within our hearts the image of you hanging on the cross. Out of love between two thieves. When we will have imprinted the awesome vision of your passion within our spirits, then we shall be worthy of the glory of your resurrection and the gift of your grace. And we shall worship and praise you, your mercy toward us, with your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you far from saving, from saving me, so far from my words of anguish? Oh my God, I call my day, you do not answer. I call my night, and I find no Yet you, O oh God, are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our forebears put their trust, they trusted in you set them free. They divide my clothing among them, they cast lots for my robe. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the heavenly peacemaker who was hung upon the wood of the cross. He opened his arms and gathered all people and nations. The Lord became flesh, and by his cross he has saved the whole world. He received true glory and worship from all the corners of the earth. The good shepherd showed his goodness to his flock by caring for his sheep. He proved how much he loved them by offering himself. To the good one be glory and honor and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. We worship, thank, and praise your divinity, O God, for you created us in your image and you formed us in your likeness. We praise your salvation, O lover of all people. On this Friday you gave us life by your cross and set us free by your death. In the beginning you completed our creation on a Friday the sixth day. Your holy hands formed mortal Adam from the dust of the earth, 
and you molded and created him in your image. From your mouth you breathed the breath of life into him. Thus he was fashioned in beauty and perfected in all knowledge. A marvelous creation. But in his ignorance, Adam wandered, neglected your command, and was delivered up to judgment. Death now entered to distort the image of your creation. But even after this, O oh compassionate and loving Lord, your mercy prevailed over all. On the sixth day, another Friday filled with mysteries, your hands were nailed to the cross, you were humiliated and mocked and your side pierced, in order to give new life to the work of your hands, through the blood and the water which flowed from your side. On this Friday of your saving passion and the commemoration of your life-giving cross, the church petitions you through the mouths of her children with the fragrance of this incense. As in the beginning you created out of love, and then return to save and give new life. Now grant your mercy upon us, the work of your creation. By your cross grant peace to the entire universe. By your cross remove anger and put an end to all wars. <clears throat> By your cross eliminate dissension. By your cross curb violence and pacify the angry. By your cross, humble the proud, expose the self-serving, and remove the enemy. By your cross, establish your church in strength, and make her monasteries and convents firm. By your cross, purify your priest and exalt the deacons. By your holy cross, sustain the elderly, subdue the haste of youth, and educate the young. By your cross, pardon sinners, forgive wrongdoers, and guard your flock which now worships you, honors your passion and embraces your wounds, and is glorified and exalted by your crucifixion. Save us and save all your people. Completely perfect in us your strength. Visit us and revive us so that our image may be renewed and our likeness recovered. <coughs> May your comfort take away the sadness of our hearts and your compassion dry our tears. Then we shall wear your glory and be clothed in your light. Make us worthy to meet the day of your resurrection as heirs within your kingdom. Then, without ceasing, 
we shall raise glory to you now and forever. church, bow down and adore the Holy Cross, for upon its sacred wood God, who made the trees, was raised. Indeed, all created things now envy it for this dignity. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he who cherish and revere and dare not draw near, suffered on the cross for us. On this day, the children of the faithful fragrant incense of forgiveness. You offered yourself on the wood of the cross for foolish sinners. You sacrificed yourself for our sake. Now, O Lord, cancel the debt of our guilt and save us from retribution. Remove the scourge of anger and all suffering from us. Encourage us with your joyful hope and your healing remedy. In your compassion, pardon the faithful departed, and we shall praise you with them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Praise the mighty one who carries earth and heaven, for he willed to carry his cross and endure pain. On this day, the Son of Justice, the Spirit of the Lord, while the children of A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Barak Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and the burial place with evil doers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light of fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for those offenses. 
A reading from the letter of Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have a great high priest has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. We're on the bottom of 65. M O M. Exalt the Lord our God, bow down before his footstool. M O M. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and they watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him, and they said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he be the chosen one, the Messiah of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other man, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Do you have no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed... We have been condemned justly, for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied to him, Amen, I say to you, This day you shall be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle, and Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt.
From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle John writes, Carrying the cross himself, Jesus went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. And there they crucified him with him two others, one on either side with the Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near to the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothing and they divided them into four shares, a share for each sh uh, soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was done in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there, whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her among his own. After this, aware that everything was now fulfilled, in order that the scripture might be finished, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine nearby. So they put a sponge soaked in this wine on a sprig of hyssop, and they put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is consummated. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. He was offered because it was his own will, and he opened not his mouth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This evening on these readings we have from the prophet Isaiah, and from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. And we can say that what they encompass is both slaughter and priesthood, death and priesthood. In the, in the prophet Isaiah, and you have to remember that Isaiah lived eight centuries before our Lord. 
And some of the fathers, they refer to him as being the fifth evangelist. Because so much of what he writes, Isaiah is the one who gives the prophecy of the birth from a virgin. Isaiah is also the one who gives among his, it's a very long book, it's over 60 chapters, that he also gives what we call the four songs of the servant, of the Ebed Yahweh, of the servant of Yahweh. And this that is quoted this evening is from that fourth song. And the prophecy, of course, is clear in why it was chosen for this evening, that he was offered because it was his own will, and he opened not his mouth. If at some point in the future, look at the preparatory prayers in the Missal of the oblations of the preparation for the altar bread and the wine, and you will have a direct reference to these texts in offering of the altar bread. And he shall be led as a sheep to the slaughter, and he shall be mute as a lamb before the shearer. These references show that the, this was always a great confusion for the people of Israel. Once the Messiah arrives, everybody did what you would expect everyone to do, is to remember all the prophecies for the Messiah of power and victory and conquest and authority and kingship. These prophecies, that he will die for our sins, that he will be betrayed, that he will be led to the slaughter as a lamb, these parts they didn't get. Sometimes there's an interpretation that it means the people of Israel. That's after our Lord's coming became the interpretation of the Jews who did not accept the Messiah. But of course, when all of these events took place, and especially after Pentecost, the apostles understood how it all came together. And in verse 8, we have that he was cut off from the land of the living. He will be led into death. But there is hope behind this song of the servant of Yahweh. And in a couple of verses later, it says that if he lay down his life for sin, he shall see a long-lived seed. He shall have vast progeny, long-lived. And then lastly, in the verses in this song that we have quoted this evening, that he shall bear their iniquities. This is the aspect of how our Lord brings healing and health into the world, how he restores the image of man that was bruised, mutilated in paradise by Adam and Eve, specifically by Adam. That bruising, that distortion of the image, we make reference to just before the words of institution in the anaphora of St. John. That he came, he descended, he became flesh, died for our sins, for us who had distorted his image. So God himself, as St. Ephraim says, clothes himself in our humanity and then allows himself, in a sense, to be stripped of that garment, not just simply in the nailing to the cross that we commemorate on the stations, but stripped of that garment of his humanity upon Golgotha. And that death, that bruising that he freely chooses in one of the readings we had earlier this week, St. Paul will refer to it as being the grace of his choosing his death. Because there is nothing of death in our Lord. His choosing that passion is just that, freedom. And he does it as a gift for us. This is chapter 53 of the prophet Isaiah. And chapter 54 and 55 are the vision of the reconstruction and the glory of the new Jerusalem, the restoration of Israel, the reconstruction and the glory of Jerusalem in chapter 54, 55, and then 60, 61, and 62. So this is chosen to understand that when he bore our iniquities, that he's not just led to the slaughter merely for the sake of dying, or that he has no power to stop his death, but on the contrary, that he freely chose to embrace this 
so that we and our iniquities might be healed. It's a very beautiful image, and it's something which is fulfilled in the person of our Lord in his death historically 2,000 years ago. But of course, it's a reality that we have in that presence as we considered on Monday, Thursday, on, on Thursday of the Great Mysteries, that we considered our Lord's death, but his presence, and the Eucharist as presence. And that's the second reading, priesthood. The power to make holy, the power to consecrate. And what is quoted this evening is from chapter four of the letter to the Hebrews, which is on the eternal Sabbath, the rest, the quies, the Shabbat, that God brings for us, which is symbolized by every Sunday. Sunday is the eighth day. Sunday is the day that follows the first creation of seven. It is the one that is the renewal of the first day of the week, the day of the creation of light, the day of the resurrection, the day of Pentecost. And that eighth day, the Sunday, is a sacramental reality representing the eternity of the kingdom. And that's in chapter four, this eternal Sabbath. But what he speaks of in this eternal Sabbath is the superiority of our Lord's priesthood to be able to consecrate us and to bring us into this eternal rest, the kingdom, the eternal Shabbat. It is what our Lord means when he says, all you who labor and are burdened, come to me and I shall give you Shabbat. I shall give you rest. This is not a declaration of a social gospel or political concern. This is that you will come to me and I will give you the eternity of the rest and the repose. But it's precisely in this same chapter that St. Paul is speaking of the superiority of our Lord's priesthood, his eternal priesthood, the eternal ability to sanctify us, consecrate us, call us out as we considered this afternoon, calling us out into this reality of his body. And that's why at the very end of this quotation, the end of this chapter, St. Paul says, then therefore, let us go with great confidence before the throne of grace. Now, the throne of grace in the Hebrew, what it's referring to is the kaporet. The kaporet was the lid on the Ark of the Covenant. So this box that was carried on two staves, that, 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 <clears throat> that was covered entirely in gold, that flat lid and the cherubim that were on either side, that place represented God's presence in the temple of Jerusalem, the kaporet. It's translated sometimes as propitiation. Here it's talking about the place or the throne of compassion, the throne of mercy. The kaporet is directly translated into our Syriac tradition of husoyo. The incense ceremonies, the Syriac center of our liturgical practices, morning, noon, and night, always these incense ceremonies, is because the incense was offered before the throne of grace in Jerusalem morning and night. And the Christian church, the Syriac tradition, the Jewish Christianity took it directly from the temple because the place of mercy is not over a box in an empty room in a building. That was only a foreshadowing. The reality of that presence is found in our Lord Jesus Christ, God incarnate, eternal word, entering into time, taking on the humanity. He is the place of compassion and mercy. And therefore, in Jewish Christianity in those first centuries and our, our direct tradition, we removed that ceremony of Jerusalem and the incense now is offered before the person of Christ, who is the throne of mercy, the kaporet, the husoyo. That is why at the beginning of our Eucharist, we have no confidior, we have no I confess, like the Latins do. Our conversion ceremony is this bowing down and in the incense that rises up before the throne of mercy. 
And that's why St. Paul's vision of this eternal Sabbath, that merely the temple and all those things merely signified and prophesied, we find that reality in this priesthood, this throne of grace of our Lord. And so he says then, let us go with confidence to the Husoyo, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in seasonable aid, continually, constantly, in all time. And for us personally, we finish with as a practical application. This is a lesson for us. Well, first, my priesthood by the sacrament of holy orders, but you also as a priestly nation. Your power to sanctify your families. Your power to be channels of grace to your colleagues. Your ability to be channels of grace through that sacrament of baptism and that ability to bring as channels of grace to those with whom you meet in the streets. You are meant to bring that seasonable aid to everyone. That's the priestly nation that, our, that St. Peter talks about. But priesthood, the ability to bring holiness, the ability to make holy, requires the prophecy of Isaiah. They are led to the slaughter, silent and mute before the shearer. We must never be afraid of the cross. There's always an ouch factor. But we should always understand that when the cross enters into our lives, it's because the good Lord is not only asking us to receive his personal sanctification of his son's priesthood of death and resurrection, grace, mercy, compassion, but it is also giving us personally, individually, the ability to communicate that also to others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God, O crucified one, lifted high on the cross, you raised up creation to its wondrous creator on high. We call out to you in prayer, Lord, hear us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God, you were stripped and nailed to the wood of shame, that we may be clothed with glory and victory. We call out to you in prayer, Lord, hear us. Please stand.
Bintu Dawood Hizail Oud Tandu Bibniha Il Masloob Bi Aydil Jnood Romho Lho وَمِنْ أَلَمِ هِغَابَةً حُسِّهَا سُمَفَاءَتْ الْوَلِدَاتْ وَسَاحَاتَا يَا Habibi, Habibi, Ya Walida, Khatibni, Kaifa Rukoryan, Wala Andubat, Ya Ibni, جاعك حرأت إكبادي آلامك خرأت فؤادي كيف تحيا والدتك يا والدا بعد موتك آمت مريم بنت داود حزاء وَمِنْ أَلَمِ هِغَابَتْ عَنْ حُسِّهَا ثُمَّ فَاءَتْ عَلْوَالِدَاتْ وَسَاحَتَا يَا يا حبيبي أي ذنب هات سنة أو كاري أنت مجهود جريح ليس في Amen, Shifa. Good job. Thank you for singing the words. Huh? Thank you for singing the words.
till the choir gets back. Ready? Bintu 
sahiyon ad baka fa abkat na ziriha fa Good morning. 
ناح الحمام على تشتت أهاليها فليكن موت ابن Sahyun antafa wa dukat bisa kiniha azara urashali tabki ala. Oh uh-huh. 